I'm Takashi Yamakawa from the University of Tokyo. The title of uh, this talk is self binary Map on Unknown Order Groups from Indistinguishable Verification and Its Applications. Uh, this is a joint work with Shota Yamada, Boichiro Hanaoka, and Nobori Kunihiro. First, I will introduce the background and motivation. By linear maps are fundamental in cryptography. They are basis of many useful cryptographic primitives such as identity-based encryption, attribute-based encryption, and non-interactive drainage proof systems, and so on. In non-construction of cryptographic by linear maps, a target group, GT, is different from domain groups G1 and G2. In particular, we cannot use an output of the map as input of the map again. This could be an obstacle in some applications. So this leads to a natural question. Is it possible to construct a bilinear map where domain and the target groups are identical? Such a map is called a self-bilinear map. Our motivation in this paper is to construct a cryptographic self-bilinear map. And this is an easy but useful implication of self-bilinear maps. Self-bilinear maps imply unbounded multilinear maps. Here, unbounded means that the level of multilinearity is not bounded in the set of phase. And the construction is very simple. Let E be a self bilinear map on G. Then for any issue N, we can construct N linear map EN like this. E2 is a self bilinear map E itself, and we can construct E3 by using E2, and we can construct E4 by using E3, and like this, we can construct for any issue N, we can construct N and linear map. So we, if we obtain self bilinear map, it will be very useful in cryptography. However, there is a negative result on self bilinear maps. In 2009, Chen and Lee proved this theorem. If an efficiently computable self bilinear map exists on a cyclic group of non prime order, then the computational Diffie Hellman assumption does not hold on G. Thus, such a group is not suitable for cryptography applications. And the proof is simple. Since E of GG is in G because uh, E is a self bilinear map, so there exists an integer C such that E of GG equals G to the C. And here we assume C is public for simplicity. Then, given G to the X and G to the Y, we have E of G to the X, G to the Y equals E of GG to the X, Y equals G to the C, X, Y. Thus, one can compute G to the X, Y by computing the C root of it and break the CGT assumption. Now we assume that C is public for simplicity, but even if C is not public, we can prove this theorem by extending this proof. <coughs> Our idea is to avoid the negative result, we consider a group G of unknown composite order. Note that the previous theorem is not applied to such a group, because in the proof, we computed the C root, but we cannot compute the C root efficiently on unknown order group. So we consider an unknown order group, and specifically, we consider the group of signed quadratic residue QRM plus for a Brown inch N. Now we recall the group of signed quadratic residues. For a Brown inch N, the group of signed quadratic residue QRM plus is defined as this. Uh, this is the set of all absolute values of quadratic residue module n, where the absolute values are taken when they are represented as an element in this range. And this is the property of the QRN plus. Uh, computing the square root on QRN plus is as hard as factorizing n. This can be proven similarly to the one witness of the Rabin encryption. Then, this, <clears throat> this is uh, our first attempt to construct a self bilinear map on QRM plus. Define a self bilinear map E as E of G to the X, G to the Y equals G to the two X Y. It is clear that this is actually a self bilinear map. Moreover, even if E is efficiently computable, the CD assumption seems not broken unlike the prime order setting because we cannot compute G to the X Y from G to the two X Y due to the one wayness of the Rabin encryption. However, there is a fundamental problem. We don't know how to compute E efficiently. If we cannot compute it efficiently, then it is almost meaningless in cryptography. So 
we have to find a way to compute E efficiently. To do so, we relax the notion of self value maps so that E of G to the X, G to the Y is efficiently computable only if all your information, tau X or tau Y, is given. We call this relaxed notion a self value map with all your information. Then the problem is how to define all your information. Here, I will int introduce the notation. Cx denotes a circuit that computes x power on qrn plus. Then the straightforward approach to define all your information is to define tau x as c2x, which is a circuit that computes 2x power on qrn plus. By this definition, the desired functionality is achieved because tau x of z to the y equals z to the y to the 2x equals z to the 2xy, and this is defined as e of z to the x z to the y. However, if tau x is a naive circuit that computes 2x power, then it may reveal x. This is undesirable for discrete logarithm based cryptographic constructions because in those constructions, we put x on exponentiation of group element to hide x, but if tau x reveal x, it becomes meaningless. So we have to require tau x to hide x. To do so, this is a clever approach. Define tau x as ctx, which is a fact that computes tx power. And we define tx as 2x plus minus order of qn plus. We can see that tx is a masked value of 2x by order of qn plus. By this definition, the desired functionality is still achieved because tau x of z to the y equals z to the y to the 2x plus minus order of, order of qn plus, and this is g to the 2x y because G is the element of QRN plus, and so order of QRN plus on the exponentiation is cancelled. <clears throat> Moreover, unlike the first construction, tau x does not reveal x if the factorization of n is not known. <clears throat> because tau x may reveal tx, but if we don't know the factorization of n, then we don't know the order of QRN plus, and so we cannot compute x from tx. Now, do we obtain a self value map with all the information? <clears throat> Unfortunately, this construction still lacks uh, important functionality. To describe this, I will attempt to construct a three party key exchange protocol based on this construction. This is a natural three party key exchange protocol based on the self value map with all the information. A public parameter consists of uh, Brown integer n and the element g in qrn plus. Alice chooses her secret x and publishes g to the x and all the information tau x with respect to x. And Bob and Charlie do similarly. The shared key is e of gg to the x y z. Alice can compute it by first computing z to the y to the x equals z to the x y and then computing e of g to the x y g to the z by using tau z, which is published by Charlie. And Bob can compute it similarly, and Charlie can do it too. So it seems that this protocol works. However, there is a problem. In the protocol, each party has to publish all the information, tau x, tau y, or tau z. However, how do these parties generate this information without knowing the factorization of n? The problem is that one cannot generate all your information tau x from x without knowing the factorization of n efficiently. On the other hand, if the factorization of n is known, then tau x does not hide x because if we know the factorization of n, we can compute order of qn plus, and so we can compute x from tx. To overcome this dilemma, we use an indistinguishability obfuscation. In general, obfuscation is to make a circuit unintelligible while preserving the functionality. In particular, we use an indistinguishability obfuscation, which is a slightly weaker notion of obfuscation. 
We say that your obfuscator I.O. is an indistinguishability obfuscator if for all equivalent circuits, C1 and C2, I.O. of C1 and I.O. of C2 are computationally indistinguishable. Recently, Gag et al. proposed the first candidate construction of I.O., so we use it. <clears throat> then I will go back to the definition of all the information. Our first attempt was to define tau x as C2x, which is a circuit that computes T, the 2x power. In this definition, there is a problem that tau x may reveal x. And our second attempt was to define tau x as Ctx, which is a circuit that computes Tx power. In this construction, uh, tau x does not reveal x, and so the problem above is resolved. However, there is another problem that we cannot compute t tau x from x efficiently. So we mix them by using I.O. and uh, take benefits of both of them. Our real definition is define tau x as obfuscated circuit of C2x. First, we observe that it is clear that tau x can be generated from x efficiently because it can be done first constructing C2x from x and then obfuscating it. As for the security, tau x does not reveal x. This can be seen by the following argument. First, we observe that C2x and Ctx have exactly the same functionality because the difference between 2x and Tx is order of Qn plus. And so the computing 2x power and the computing Tx power on Qn plus is exactly the same. So we can use the indistinguishability of classification and IO of C2x and IO of Ctx uh, computationally indistinguishable. And in particular, IO of C2x reveals x no more than IO of C2x does. And IO of C2x does not reveal x because Tx does not reveal x as seen in our second attempt. So overall, IO of C2x does not reveal x. And we now obtain the self value map with all the information with desired functionality and desired security. Then we can construct a multilinear map by the iterated usage of a self bilinear map E. And since our self bilinear map requires uh, all the information, the resulting multilinear map also requires all the information. But this is not a large problem in most applications. And uh, actually, we can use it uh, similarly to a usual multilinear map. So now we are interested in what hardness assumption holds with respect to our construction. We introduce the multilinear computational Diffie Hellman with all your information assumption, which is an analog of multilinear computational Diffie Hellman assumption. And we proved this theorem. If IO is an indistinguishability obfuscator and the factoring assumption holds, then the MCDHA assumption holds. I will not give the full proof now, but the intuition is that uh, this theorem can be proven based on the idea that tau x does not reveal x. <clears throat> so we obtained a multilinear map with all the information where the MCDHA assumption holds and the existence of IO and the factoring assumption. And our map can replace many non-multilinear map based primitives based on the MCDH assumption, such as multi-party key exchange, broadcast encryption, and attribute-based encryption for general circuits. Note that these primitives are originally based on MDDH assumption. However, we can convert those primitives into based on, M based on MCDH assumption by using goldrahin leibin hardcore function. And if we instantiate them by our map, then they have interesting properties thanks to the unbounded multilinearity. To describe this, I, I will show the case of multi-party key exchange. This is a three-party key exchange protocol based on self bilinear map. <clears throat> uh, this protocol can be extended to four-party, five-party, and any numbers of parties. 
Now, the remarkable point of the Fortescue is that a public parameter is independent of the number of users thanks to the unbounded multilinearity. And this is a, not a direct application of our self bilinear map, but by a similar technique, we constructed a somewhat homomorphic en encryption for NC1 circuit based on I.O. under the file hiding assumption, like this. And this is the conclusion. We defined a self bilinear map with all the information and constructed it based on I.O. under the factoring assumption. As an application of it, we constructed a multilinear map with all the information with a useful hardness assumption, which can replace many known multilinear map based primitives. And we also constructed somewhat homomorphic encryption based on I.O. under the file hiding assumption. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>